Okay, well, um, I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar here hosted by MAI, Why Come to Lit World 2024? Uh, of course, um, as you might imagine, we hope all of you who are attending this webinar will come to Lit World 2024. But today we'd like to share some compelling reasons why we think you would really enjoy and benefit from joining us at Lit World 2024 and at Pueblo, Mexico. My name is John Most. I'm president of MAI, and I'm here with Jose Carlos Gutierrez, um, who is our host chair for Lit World, Lit World in Mexico. Jose, do you want to say a word? Well, I'm glad to be here with you. This is a great experience uh, hosting uh, Lit World in Mexico, and uh, can't, can't wait to share with all of you all, all the things we've prepared for you. So yeah, well, I'm just going to outline what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm going to give just uh, like an overview of, of Lit World. I mean, it's particularly for those of you who've maybe never been to a Lit World, just what are some of the things that make it unique? What are some of the benefits of attending Lit World? And then we're going to sh shift back to Jose Carlos, who will then show some pretty amazing images that he's taken of Puebla and Mexico in general. Um, giving you a real taste of what it will be like for us to be in Mexico. And then at the end, we're going to open it up to questions that you may have. You can put them in the chat or in the Q&A, and uh, we'll be watching for those and address those at the end. So we're going to move pretty quickly. Um, this will be recorded, of course, and we'll be sending you the recording later if you'd like to go back and review anything that's shared. But uh, I hope we're able to even though this is a virtual meeting, we're not sitting together in the same room, uh, having a cup of coffee and just chatting. I hope we are able to communicate some of our enthusiasm for Lit World virtually today so that you will that, that will be contagious and that you will also want to join us in Mexico. So um, right now I'm going to share my screen. Yeah. There we go. By the way, I just saw one of our participants, Cornell Heriatsky, a big shout out to Cornell, who hosted our most recent Lit World in Hungary, right at the end of the pandemic. So we're, obviously we're praying we don't have another pandemic before between now and, and Lit World 2024, but uh, just thanks again to Cornell and all those who have hosted Lit Worlds since um, it started in 1986. I think I've been to everyone since 1988. So, um, yeah, it's been a, a, a wonderful ride to be part of all of those, and we're really excited about the coming one. So, um, why come to Lit World? Okay, oops. I had a del delayed reaction on my screen there. Yeah, I'd like to just tell a little bit about what makes Lit World unique, because I think a lot of us have been at publishing or writing conferences of, of one kind or another. But um, there are some unique things, I believe, about Lit World that um, you, we hope that you would really appreciate. One, it's a very participatory conference. In other words, yeah, we have our speakers. There'll be about 40 people involved and as plenary speakers, workshop leaders, devotional speakers, etc., but there are many opportunities for you to share about your own experiences because we want to hear from you. Um, in other words, it's not just talking heads at Lit World where we're sitting and very passive. Um, there are many opportunities for you to share and interact uh, between ourselves and in the actual sessions. In addition, um, you'll have a lot of personal in interaction with the speakers, the, what we call resource leaders or the experts. Um, you know, some conferences you can go to, the speakers, you know, they, they fly in, they fly out, they talk for an hour and they're gone. But typically at Lit World, nearly all of our resource leaders are there for the entire week. So you're with them at coffee break, at mealtime, um, you know, in the actual sessions, and you have an opportunity to get to know them a little bit and to ask your personal questions. Um, there is an opportunity for you as well to sign up for one-on-one -on -one consultations um, where you can share your particular questions with those experts. So that's that's a great feature, I think. 
Um, Live World is a mix of vision building. We want to kind of introduce you to the trends, global trends in Christian publishing and writing and what's coming down the road. Uh, but at the same time, we also have, offer many how-to, very practical training workshops on different aspects of publishing. It could be marketing, a nonfiction writing, fiction writing, editorial, um, digital publishing. Um, there's a, a huge variety of very practical uh, how-to training workshops. The world is very international. We we try to have and we will have speakers from all the world regions, Asia, Asia, Africa, Europe, uh, Latin America, etc. Um, it's targeted, and we really try to target the program to those who may have never been to a publishing conference like this, uh, from what we could call the hard places in the world, um, places like um, Laos or Cambodia or, um, you know, just places that don't have as much access to the kinds of training that is available in some places of the West. And then also, um, we focus on the spiritual aspect of the written word. We we try to kind of, as we're looking at these big picture trends and and all the intricacies of effective publishing, we we want to keep coming back to the reason why we're doing this in the first place. You know how God uses the written word to transform lives and our own spiritual growth as Christian communicators because uh, we give uh, of what we have from our our walk with Christ through the written and published word. Uh, what will make this Lit World unique? I, I mentioned that Lit World started in 1988. We've had people from at least 100 countries at Lit World over the years. But this will be our very first Lit World conference held in a Spanish-speaking country. Uh, we did do Lit World in Brazil in 2006, which was sort of trilingual, I guess you could say, Portuguese, Spanish, and English. Um, but this will be our first held in a Spanish-speaking country. And some are asking, will you have, um, you know, is this an English language conference or a Spanish language conference? Well, because we have participants from all over the world, uh, English would be the more common language for the for most of the participants. But we will be providing Spanish interpretation for all the plenary sessions and also most of the workshops. We'll be offering some of the sessions in Spanish as well. So uh, you Spanish speakers, uh, we want you to feel at home. We want you to feel that this is your conference too. So we're going to be, you know, as bilingual as possible. Recognize there'll be people at the conference who, who speak Chinese or who speak, um, you know, Czech. It's just a, a great variety of languages represented, but language English is the language of the conference with Spanish a close second or on a par with English. And we are expecting participants from 50 countries, uh, Lord willing. What would we gain from Lit World? If I could just sum it up. Um, fresh vision. We want you to come away with a sense of what God would have you to do in your writing and publishing and what's going on around the world and how to jump on board with what God is doing around the world through uh, Christian communications. We want you to get fresh skills in writing and publishing. And then this is a really key one. It sounds maybe kind of touchy-feely, but it's it's really important to all that Lit World is about, is forming those new friendships and new networks with Christian communicators around the world. I think possibly Jose Carlos will share a little bit about his own experience as a first-time Lit World attendee in, in that regard, too, uh, when we get to that later. So, you know, what a unique opportunity to sit down at mealtime and you're just chatting with you know, a publisher from Lebanon and a writer from Zimbabwe and um, an editor from Argentina. You know, it's just such a unique experience at Lit World to have those kinds of conversations. <clears throat> Some time back, we, you know, we looked through all the, the past evaluations of the Lit World conferences and, and seeing what people especially appreciated about the conference, the impact that it made on them. So as we sorted through all those, we found that there were kind of some common responses um, in terms of benefits. And they kind of fell into what I saw as seven categories, seven key benefits of attending the world. And I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. I have a few quotes. Um, 
maybe you could just reflect on them later. But I thought it might be helpful to you because possibly as you're thinking about, should I go to Lit World? You may identify one of these benefits as something you really want and that you really need so that, you know, just got to go to Lit World so you can, God can really work in your life in these areas. <clears throat> one is encouragement and courage to persevere. You know, maybe you're working in a particularly difficult situation in your publishing and writing ministry. Maybe you feel pretty alone. Maybe you are on the verge of quitting or of giving up. Um, we always have some people at Lit World that will tell us that, you know, before I came, I was just about on the point of quitting. Um, here's a quote from a friend from Japan that reflects that. He says, my Japanese friends pray for me, but I think they hardly understand the difficult challenges that I face daily as a publisher. Christian publishing has become increasingly difficult in Japan, and I feel anxiety every day, and sometimes I feel there is no help. At Lit World, it was a great treasure for me to meet people who are doing publishing like me in difficult situations. Now I feel less lonely. So a shout out to Haruo Obuchi, who was transparent enough to, to share that with us. And uh, we just thank God that, you know, he found some fresh encouragement at Lit World. And you may be one like Haruo who are going through that. And, and we believe that Lit World could be extremely helpful, um, God willing, for you in that regard. <clears throat> Maybe a renewed sense of calling. You know, sometimes we overwork that phrase, call. Um you know, for some of us, we can identify, wow, I have a very specific calling from God. Others, maybe it's been more gradual. We just kind of gravitate toward Christian writing and publishing. Then over time, we develop our sense of calling. But we do find that uh, Lit World can be very uh, instrumental in reaffirming or reawakening that sense of call because that's that call, that that uh, leading from God that really helps us to to continue on to persevere. There's a quote from a friend from a closed Asian country that after Lit World says, you know, we found our calling as a result of Lit World and the fires of passion are burning now. I really like that quote. Also, uh, very important. Now, this is a publishing conference, a global publishing conference. So we want you to gain some fresh tools and skills. <clears throat> A quote from uh, one of our friends at the last Lit World in Hungary. He had just become director of a publishing house four months before Lit World. So it was really timely for him to be there. And he said, um, you know, I became director of a publishing house just before Lit World. And Lit World gave me the opportunity to get wisdom from the experts. So again, at Lit World, you have the opportunity to interact with the resource leaders and get all their wisdom and their tips. Sharpen ministry focus. Uh, you're kind of being reminded of, of why you do what you do and also maybe areas where you should focus in and maybe take a slightly different direction. Just what is your focus right now in your publishing ministry? Love this quote from one of our participants in Singapore in 2018, Simon Hunter of Australia. I was truly inspired to sit in a room with 52 nationalities all worshiping together in a current cultural climate that seeks to separate us into identity groups, the myriad of faces from across the globe made it very clear for me that there is only one answer to division, Christ. Author Robin Gunn, who's been a resource leader at some of our Lit World conferences. Ideas for expanding your market. <clears throat> Here's a writer from India who came away with some ideas for articles. Um, quite often, um, participants at Lit World serve in countries where the Christian population is very tiny, maybe 1% of the population or even less. And they often will come away with, wow, you know, I want to publish for Christians, but 99% of the people in my country are not believers yet. So what can I do to meaningfully communicate the hope that I have in Christ through the publishing published word with them? And then this sense of, as I alluded to earlier, be, belonging to a global publishing family, a lit world family, sometimes people will say. 
And here's a quote from an editor from a closed Asian country. I never imagined God would bless me so abundantly. I met so many wonderful souls and great and talented men and women of God, men and women of the word, men and women of prayer, men and women moved by God's spirit. I was awed. I was humbled. I was joyous. I was overwhelmed. And yes, I was exceedingly refreshed and rejuvenated. So thank God for that. There's Jose Carlos, who we'll hear from in a minute, <laughs> singing in a previous lit world, I believe in Singapore. Then finally, professional spiritual encouragement, professional um, and spiritual encouragement. Um, one of our MEI Africa trustees, Joan Campbell, said after Lit World, I came home with many new thoughts, insights, and knowledge and a deepened experience of God. I've been trying to put it into words for people, but feel like I'm failing to explain just how special Lit World is. The sense of care, unity, and servanthood particularly struck me. It's just not something you see that often in the world or even to our shame in our churches. So as so that is the case, we just thank God if that is what comes through at Lit World. And we do hope as you join us in Mexico that that is your experience as well. So through Lit World, we, you know, we've seen some exciting outcomes. Um, we've seen actually seen some publishing houses born, new publications conceived, increased effectiveness in publishing and writing ministry. Here's a woman from Lily, from Bulgaria, who after the Lit World in Hungary, 2022, started a publishing company. I we can't take credit for that, but that Lit World, um, you know, did all of that. But it, obviously, it had an impact in her course of action following the conference. And we just, I mean, it was exciting to hear that <clears throat> and similar stories over the years, how participants have come away and done some pretty incredible things with God's help. And so, you know, I just want to emphasize that, you know, conferences are, can be a remarkable experience, but um, they're only truly valuable, I think, in terms of outcomes, how we put into practice the things that we experience and that we learn. So um, that's always our prayer for Lit World, that God would really do something first in our hearts, but also in our activities, in our actions, in Christian writing and publishing. Um, <clears throat> so next steps, what to do? Well, you can contact us with any questions. You can sub subscribe to our updates. You'll have all these links in the recording. If you don't have time to jot them down, Take part in our writing contest. Uh, I hope you've you've become aware of that. You can find on our website all the details. Um, the deadline for submitting your entries is May 15th, so there's still plenty of time. I invite you to participate in that. Also, remember that the early bird registration deadline is May 31st, so to save some money, I'd encourage you to consider uh, registering online by that time. And then pray for us and God's leading for Lit World Excel. So that's um, like a, a race to share some of that information. I hope it was helpful. Now I'm going to turn this over to Jose Carlos. Um, and I'm going to share the screen with him. Jose Carlos, before you share your screen, let me just ask you a couple of quick questions. Um, you know, all of you will be getting to know Jose Carlos really well at Lit World because you'll see him a lot. He's the host chair of the conference. But, you know, he hasn't always been a Lit World attendee. And I, I vividly remember the first time we that I met Jose Carlos, and I believe that was in 2012, correct? Jose Carlos? Yes. In Kenya. So could you tell us just a little bit, what was your experience at that first Lit World? Uh, why did you go and what did you get out of it, as it were? Yeah, thank you, John. And well, I'm, I'm really glad to be with you and see many familiar names in uh in the participants uh i i went uh for the first time to uh liberal in kenya uh with a scholarship uh offered by me uh i didn't know what to expect i thought it was going to be just a a, a conference I, at that time i was not very involved in publishing i had a graphic design uh job out of, out of firm in mexico city and i did uh, comics, Christian comics is 
as part of my ministry in church and with other publishing houses in Mexico. And uh, it, it uh, opened my my eyes to the editorial world. And it was uh, uh, an experience that also strengthened my faith and inspired me by meeting new people and, and learning about their their experiences in publishing in, in their own lives, in their own ministries, and how they struggle and how, how God helps them to overcome obstacles. And that was such an amazing experience. And it, 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 it remains because that uh, keeps inspiring me to, to keep uh, working in, in publishing to, to help and inspire and train others, uh, such as we're doing now in Latin America. Jose Carlos, just a quick question. I remember, you know, I, me I mentioned earlier about some of the international networking that happens. As I recall, you had some kind of interesting networking with people after the conference and actual projects. You, could you share about that a little bit? Yes. Uh, uh, I met uh, John and Maggie Gatuku from, from Kenya. They led a ministry uh, that published a magazine, the Mazi Magazine. So I started uh, doing comics with them, uh, along with an author, Ivanova from Cameroon. So the, the, that little uh, helped us start an international par partnership that remains nowadays. Today, I have more time and resources to keep publishing, uh, to be making comics, to be published in the magazine. And uh, I think it would be hard to, to meet them uh, if it wasn't by a little world. One of my favorite photos of Jose Carlos from that conference was Jose Carlos with, I believe it was Ernest from Kenya and Ksenia from Russia. But what did the three of them, a Mexican, a Russian, and a Kenyan have in common? Because they all spoke Spanish. <laughs> So see now that's another example of that uh, Spanish is a language of heaven I'm told so <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay well thank you Jose Carlos um, why don't we just go on into uh, tell us a little bit about what's happening and preparations there and in, in Mexico and if you could show us some of the images I I saw a preview it's really exciting what Jose Carlos has to share if you could just go on in and and share your screen yes uh. Well, first of all, let me share with you that it all started with praying. We've been praying for uh, for Latin America, for well, for all the regions of the world that need uh, to create uh, content in their own language and culture and spread uh, God's word in, through different genres and and publishing uh, uh, media nowadays digital as well. So uh, we, we prayed and uh, and we started with. Uh, uh, looking for venues because uh, uh, let me tell you one of the the main um, the, the main aspects for a liberal to happen is to have a venue that can host uh, about two hundred people there in the hotel, have an auditorium, and six meeting rooms to be used simultaneously. So th that's really important. So with a very ado, let me share my screen and uh, walk you through uh, what's going on in Mexico and what you can expect to uh, live if you come to Lit World in Puebla. So just a minute. And uh, one of the reasons uh, we choose uh, Puebla, or, or may I say God directed us through that path is because it's a, a, a modern city with a lot of historic uh, heritage and close to an international airport. Um, okay, so here it is. The venue is Presidente Intercontinental Hotel. This is all the amenities you will find. But as I told you before, uh, having the technology and the, the rooms to, 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 to have all the training, worships, uh, keynotes, and especially uh, what I like about this hotel is that it combines uh, Mexican the art and architecture with uh, 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 all the, the modern necessities that we need at a training conference like Lee World. And as you may see, there are a lot of places where you can see it all over the hotel. And that's really important because part of Lee World is uh, connecting 
with other people. We have one-on-one -on -one consultations with uh, resource leaders, as, as Jan said. So that's one of the things that I like a lot. Uh, uh, you, you can see there's an outdoor pool. Uh, the, the, the food is amazing in this hotel. And uh, there's a, a nice auditorium as as you see, even uh, places outdoors where you can just uh, sit by yourself and get inspired and, and maybe pray or write and, and also connect with others. And now let me tell you about Puebla. Puebla uh, is, uh, as I told you, a modern city, but it, its historic center has been declared as uh, World Heritage Site, but uh, UNESCO in 1987, and you'll see why. Okay, you can see the contrast of of the city from a, a high view and uh, downtown Puebla, which holds a variety of, of colors and many uh, great art expressions, both modern and uh, and traditional. I went with John last weekend and we, we were blessed enough to see a parade of different uh, Mexican uh, traditional dances and costumes. And this is Puebla. A lot of things are going on uh, in terms of art. You can see here uh, one, of the, one of the oldest buildings um, uh, in, in Mexico uh, and recent art and well uh, mention apart is the delicious food you will find there for all the tastes and a lot of salsas to try and well Cholula uh, this is uh, uh, what you might find if you do a Google, Google search about Cholula this sauce but Cholula is uh, best known for uh, its great pyramid with the Church of uh, Nuestra Señora de los Remedios Sanctuary. So it was, it's a, a pyramid that was covered and now it has a, uh, a church on top where you can have an amazing view of all the city. Uh, this is the archeological site next to the pyramid with a recreation of what it was like. And all of the surrounding areas You'll see traditional markets with a lot of art crafts and um, and uh, typical things from the region. This is uh, the view you can get, and on a on a less cloudy day, you can see the mountains that surrounds the uh, the area. And this is a look of the church uh, or the inside of the church. And the surrounding streets are a uh, small architecture and it's really well conserved. So um, you can see John there standing with Rebecca, one of the uh, host uh, committee members. And next to Cholula, it's a small plaza that we would like to visit, the traditional market, many uh, uh, small uh, restaurants, shops and th this uh, will help us uh, get, get a, to know the, the 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 venue and the certain areas because uh, for those of you who haven't attended the world we have an outing by the end of the week and it's also an important time to connect and and keep uh, uh, getting inspired and know people that maybe you you've seen at a conference and then you can uh, uh, share your own experiences with. So this is a hosting committee that is working hard, Abel, Margie, Judy, uh, Carlos, and, and Elsie, who is, was not there at the time, Rebecca, uh, Oscar, John, and myself. And um, uh, we're working in uh, transportation, how to get you from uh, Mexico City's International Airport to ride to the hotel in Puebla, uh, the outing, and uh, all of the, the important details of the conference that you that you will see, and for you those of you who have been to Liberal, you know um, 
uh, all, all the work that's needed, but that we're doing, uh, first of all, uh, talking about myself, uh, praising and thanking God for the work he's done in my life through MAI, and now the opportunity he's given me to, to uh, serve in Latin America. This is the fourth year we've been uh, having monthly webinars in Spanish uh, with different authors and, and, and uh, leaders. And some of them has uh, our connections we've made through all, all these years uh, in uh, going to Lit World. Thank you, Jose Carlos. Those are great photos. <clears throat> um, I should mention that you know Jose Carlos uh, referred to the fact that you know we've been having webinars, monthly webinars in Spanish here at MAI. Uh, and Jose Carlos has been really coordinating that with a group of friends from around Latin America. And one of the exciting for us as an organization, as a ministry outcomes of holding Lit World in Spanish speaking Latin America is we will be, I guess you could say, formally launching an MAI Latin America board. Um, MAI has regional boards already in Europe, Asia, and Africa. And all of those really grew out of Lit World conferences held in those regions. So um, at Lit World, we will be presenting uh, these men and women who will be serving on the new MEI Latin America board. Uh, it's Again, it's for me personally and for MEI, it's really an exciting development and that this group would then help to spearhead training within Latin America. And that's always been our dream to see training grow organically at the grassroots as it were. And so we pray that that will be indeed happening in Latin America through men and women like Jose Carlos with this vision to equip others. So um, we'll be you'll be hearing more about that a, a bit later. So we've got some time here. We we tried to, to keep our remarks somewhat limited so that we would have time for any questions. I just like to speak to so in the chat box, please put the put your questions there. Um, we'd love to hear any, you know, any questions that you have. Um, I will speak to one of them right now uh, related to transportation. Uh, we are encouraging participants who are flying in from outside Mexico to fly into Mexico City. Um, there is a regional airport in Puebla, but as we've checked it out and we've checked out just the logistics of things, we would really highly recommend that you fly into Mexico City. And as part of your paid conference registration, we'll be including free transportation from the airport to directly to the hotel. Um, we'll be getting some buses and actually having uh, volunteers and, and others in the airport who will help receive you. They'll be looking for you, assuming you gave us your travel details and you'll be shepherded to a bus that will take you straight to the hotel. Uh, there is a you know very fine public bus service. You, you know, if you wanted to go by yourself, take a bus from the airport to Puebla, you could do that. Um, and that's probably what you'd want to do if for whatever reason you're coming before the conference bus transportation starts, you're coming in early by a day, a couple of days or something, but then you still have the taxi from the bus station in Puebla to the hotel, which is another step in the transportation process. So, uh, we're really doing whatever we can to make the transportation the least complicated as possible for you. So we're, you know, we're including that in your registration, the free bus transportation straight from the airport to the hotel and then back again. Um, as Frodo said, uh, to, to there and back again, we want you to get back again too. So uh, we will have that airport transportation available as you give us your flight information. Um, so yeah, please, any questions that you have there, um, If, uh, I'll make one more comment and then if Jose Carlos if you're seeing some questions that I'm not seeing please address those I was just going to make a comment in regard to scholarships <clears throat> some have asked about that you know are there scholarships available you know we know that it's expensive to travel um, internationally and then you have your costs on the ground but um, we are working really hard to try to raise scholarship funds but, um, for the conference um, 
contact us if you'd like to receive a scholarship application form and we'll send it to you. Um, I, I should say that we give priority to scholarship applicants <clears throat> who have never been at a lit world before. Uh, we like to have people return to lit world, but in terms of scholarship ap applicants, we we do give priority to people who have not had that experience yet. Also to people who do not have easy access to funding sources in their own countries. And, you know, it's it's such a difficult thing because we get a lot of applications from very worthy candidates um, we can't support everybody. Um, we can't provide full scholarships to everybody, but we want to do whatever we can so that finances are not a huge barrier to you coming. And, and I will say, I just want to encourage you, um, don't shut the door because to the possibility, just close your mind. It's not possible because I don't have the resources. If God wants you there, he'll get you there. So, um, you know, think of your context, think of your church, think of your friends, think of others who may potentially want to say, hey, I would really like you to be at Lit World, and I want to help. And here's my gift. It's a small one, but I hope it helps. Or it's a big one, and I hope it helps. So um, don't immediately say it's impossible because, uh, man, there's no way I'm going to be able to afford that. Um, it is, you know, serious money in some ways. But um, for God, you know, money is such a, you know, he's got it. <laughs> he's, he's the author you know, of all things and he can provide. So just, you know, pray about it. I would encourage you to pray about it as you reflect on it and just knock on some doors and, and see what God might open up for you. Yes, I would like to add uh, to that, John, that mm -hmm. uh, in, in my experience, uh, as you said, I, 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 I've been praying since the first time I went to Live World, because I I, uh, I got a scholarship, but I needed to raise funds to travel to the other side of the world, from Mexico to Kenya, and I remember uh, praying and got uh, provided through many friends, family members, people from church that uh, opened their heart, and even without me asking, they they knew I was going to Kenya, why I was going to, and they they offered. Uh, the, uh, some gifts, and that's how God provided. And so it was such a a leap of faith, you know, to go to the world, and then ha God has been provided. So one of the reasons that we also uh, have in Mexico is because uh, uh, it it makes your your money uh, how to say. Um, it, uh, for example, all of you all of you who come from Europe of, uh, or uh, USA, uh, you can get. Uh, uh, great rates, and even for people from Latin America and Africa, we we believe it uh, uh, a place that uh, that offers uh, decent uh, prices. Even for us in Mexico City, going to Puebla, we get a lot uh, out of uh, what we paid for. And let me tell you, God has opened the door amazingly with this hotel. They they are giving us. Uh, a really decent rate. We've been working in, in all the preparations since 2022. And it all started with praying and looking at of the internet. Uh, I was uh, praying God, like, help us find a venue that has all the technology that we require, all the all the rooms, and that uh, gives us a, a rate that it's affordable. And he has uh, responded amazingly. That's great. Thank you, Jose Carlos. I'm seeing several other questions that have popped up that are often asked. Uh, I will say before I answer or speak to those questions that you will be receiving with a link to the recording of this webinar some uh, Lit World FAQs, frequently asked questions. Some of these questions that you're asking now will be addressed in that. So you'll have something in writing that you can refer back to. So a um, couple of quick comments on questions that you're, thank you for sharing. One, some have asked about, is it possible for me to attend Lit World without staying at the conference hotel and to save some money? <clears throat> so first of all, I should say that always historically in, in Lit World is really ever since it started, we've really encouraged people to have the full experience. In other words, stay at the hotel. Um, Often sessions will run into the in the evening or you'll want to meet with somebody for breakfast. Um, we really want to encourage that 
whole sense of community at the conference. So we would always highly endorse and ask really that participants stay at the hotel for the conference. Having said that, um, we will we are going to make available a limited number of non-residential registrations to Mexican participants, um, only to Mexican participants, and a limited number first come first serve. So, if you'd like to know more about that, please contact me. We we definitely empathize. I empathize with the desire to save some money, but if you're going to go to all the trouble to go to Lit World, have the full experience. You know, stay at the hotel and live in community with your brothers and sisters from around the world. It's it's really uh, a plus if you do that. Um, secondly, uh, visa invitation letters. Um, for some of those who need visas, uh, we will get you a visa invitation letter signed. You, know, you need it from a Mexican organization. So um, a big shout out to the Milamex ministry in Mexico City that has agreed to be, as it were, kind of like not a sponsor, but an official Mexican organization that is vouching for you as a legitimate participant in the Lit World Conference and um, we'll get your information, put it into the letter. It will be prepared in Spanish and you can use that when you apply for your visa. You'll need it. You'll need a visa invitation letter. And then lastly, um, some have asked, you know, is it safe to go to Mexico? You know, am I going to be at risk if I go to Lit World in Mexico? You know, you see a lot of things on the news. You, see, you know, you we tend to hear, you know, the bad things that are happening in every country. And of course, we've all heard probably about the drug, some of the drug violence in Mexico, um, just as you've heard about the violence in my city, the greater Chicago area. Um, but I will say that, you know, in, in my experience in Puebla, and it's a very touristy area. Um, I can say safely that, you know, in tourist area, the hotel area, I don't think you'll have any issues uh, with that. Obviously, you just you take the same precautions you would in any big city. You know, you're not wandering around at two in the morning on a lonely street. Um, the hotel, when they have large conferences, always even has extra security. Um, they've assured us of that. And the hotel that we're going to be staying at has hosted uh, celebrity, celebrities, professional soccer teams, people who would be more concerned than we are probably about their own security. So, um, you know, anything can happen anywhere in the world, but I feel very confident that it'll be safe. I was just reading about this yesterday and came across a, you know, a, an organization in Puebla that offers Spanish language classes and they're, they're upset that people won't, they're saying it's too dangerous to go. And they, they ran a whole big study that Puebla has one of the very lowest rates of crime of any place in Mexico. So um, I'd encourage you not to let that be a deterrent and um, just enjoy the whole Mexican experience. I think it's gonna be a great uh, venue. I'm, I'm really excited about it. And uh, I know that our host team in Mexico will do whatever they can to make you feel comfortable, answer any questions you may have um, about whatever. So yeah, but those are really good questions, you know. We're hearing them, and um, so we want to be as responsive as we can to those questions. Do you have any comments on that part, Jose Carlos, about just security, things like that? Yes, I saw uh, Peter Calvin is asking uh, that how often uh, we hear that foreigners get robbed in Mexico. So, um, yes, we, uh, th that was one of the first things we, we talked when we went to the hotel, and they told us how they... Uh, well, the, the place is secure. We we so they have cameras and everything, but they also uh, uh, coordinate with uh, the police force when they have these big events. And uh, I went there with John directly from Mexico City International Airport. We took the we took the bus, and then we went to Puebla uh, downtown, walking in the morning. We went at night. We saw a lot of um, uh, police officers taking uh, care. Of people, but it's a really family uh, place to be with families, you know. So uh, we did it, you know, uh, in order to see how is it. And uh, so uh, when I went to Singapore once, somebody told me, "How is Mexico doing with all the the uh, drug crime and everything?" I told them, "Well, the the world is a dangerous place, but Jesus has overcome the world." 
you know so um and uh we, we need to take precautions everywhere we travel so we are, are going to be sure to share that in the uh the the liberal side but um and uh, one of the things that we're doing and also answering uh, john john uh, john campbell's question about flying mexico city he, yes uh mexico city's international airport is the closest one to mexico i'm sorry to puebla uh and we're uh, arranging uh the private transportation for those who arrive on saturday and sunday right john yes uh -huh. so it's going to be a uh, uh, transportation arranged by by us so you will be taken directly from where you step out from your, uh, right after you get your luggage right to the hotel and back when you when the conference is uh, finished and yes there is an international airport in puebla and but as i just said it's difficult to find the, the flights connecting and getting there so that's why we advise flying to mexico city's international airport that's the one you you might want to find when you are doing uh, a flight search. Yeah, you'll see in the chat comments from some locals in Puebla who are encouraging you to, you know, just take the normal precautions that you would anywhere as you're traveling, you know. Um, there's a question about program. I realize we haven't really talked about that much, hardly at all, really. Um, I would encourage you to go to our website, maiglobal.org, where you'll at least see uh, a list of some of the resource leaders. What struck me as, you know, as we're putting together the program so far, we have some really top publishers coming to this particular lit world. Um, you'll see them there. Um, quite a number of them speak Spanish, which is, I think, really appropriate for this particular lit world. Um, in the workshops, we typically have tracks. You don't have to stay in the track, you know, legalistically. Like if you're an editor, editor, you don't have to stay only in the editor workshops. You can jump around. But there's a great variety. Uh, we'll have resource people who are very experienced. We we invite practitioners who are doing this kind of work day in, day out. So they're speaking from experience. You'll immediately recognize this. This is not, we don't take an academic approach, as it were, to publishing and writing. We, we um, There's a place for that, too. But we particularly focus in on, um, you know, what works, what doesn't work um, as, our as our practitioner um, trainers share from their experience. And again, there's lots of chance for questions and things like that. Um, but be watching for our, our website. And also, I think probably all of you are on our Lit World email interest list, which is how you got this invitation to the webinar. So we'll be keeping you informed at least every month or perhaps more frequently about the program, about the workshops being offered. I saw a question about, are you gonna have something for writing for children? Yes, definitely. It's a real priority of MAI. I, um, we've always, you know, I've been with MAI for a long time, and one of the the trademarks of MAI, we 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 want to remind our publisher and writer friends: don't forget children, youth, people with less resources, and people who don't know the Lord yet. Um, you know, we can become kind of cliquish in what we write and publish. We you know go back to the same people all the time, the people we're comfortable with. But we really encourage our writer and publisher friends to think about those audiences that have sometimes been forgotten or neglected. And what can you say to them you know, as Christian writers and publishers and how to, how to effectively communicate with them? And, um, Jose Carlos, are you seeing any other questions that maybe we're not speaking to yet? Uh, yes, uh, the Frost, Jean Pasteur from Congo, uh, is asking if if English is spoken in Mexico, and well, uh, the answer is yeah. In most touristic places and places like the airport, restaurants, uh, people speak English, so uh, don't be afraid uh, for that. And well, the the conference is gonna uh, it will take place in English, even though there's gonna be a translation to Spanish for some of the sessions. Um, 
Yeah, and one one thing we're looking at doing is that um, we'll have a lot of people in the conference who are who speak both Spanish and English. That on their name tag there would be some kind of an indication that they are one of those bilingual people. So that if you need any help with a, you know, you're trying to communicate with someone, you don't know the language, that you can you can find somebody who can be available to help you with that. Um, yes, and. Well, uh, Diana uh, Bayani, she's asking uh, if there's going to be uh, also uh, poetry in the workshops. So uh, I think that's important to consider. And let me tell you, this is one of the things that we've been trying also to include in our workshops in Spanish. So thank you for uh, asking about that, uh, Diana. Yeah, we recognize there's a big interest in poetry in many parts of the world. We did some writer training in Kyrgyzstan where people would joke that poetry is loved so much that even the dogs bark in poetry in Kyrgyzstan. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, we can't obviously can't cover everything out there, but we do want to provide a, a big variety uh, that caters to the different interests and needs of our participants from around the world. See a question about visas. Um, you can easily find on the internet what countries need visas for Mexico, but we will send you a link to that. Um, I will say that compared to some places where we have held Lit World, that Mexico is less difficult in terms of the number of countries that need visas. Obviously, there you know there are countries that those of you who will will need visas, but we will do whatever we can to help you um, if you need one with your visa invitation letter and any other supportive documentation that you might need to, um, to obtain your visa. But it's something that we can be thinking about because, you, you know, any of us who have traveled internationally know that's kind of a, you know, it can be a very tense issue if you're kind of waiting for your visa and you're trying to apply. So we pray that nobody will just as we pray nobody will miss the world because of finances, we pray that no one will be um, unable to attend because of these issues. So God willing, everybody who needs a visa uh, will get the one that they need for Mexico. Yes, uh, uh, if you're planning to attend or you're praying about it, uh, do some research about what do you need? Because in some cases it's only paperwork uh, Mexico has a lot of embassies in many countries, but if uh, there's not a, a Mexican embassy in your country, you will need to go to the closest country where there's a Mexican embassy to do the paperwork. So just have that in mind. But I, I, I've never heard of uh, you know people from from uh, other country struggling getting you, their visa denied uh, unless it's because of the time frame they are asking for it. Hey, these are all really good questions. Um, some good comments there in the chat too. Appreciate that. Um, yeah. Yes, and and regarding security, uh, uh, we advise people, uh, as in many other countries, just to take cabs order from the hotel, or you can use uh, Uber, which works really great in in Puebla. We, we've used it ourselves when we've traveled there and it works really fine from the bus station from the hotel to the downtown to even back from Cholula so uh, that's uh, that's the one way you, you can you can the you can move around and also the, the hotel has a lot of uh, uh, amenities it has a gym has a spa has uh, another restaurant beside of the main one and uh, and Spanish restaurant uh, and there's also a mall, like five minutes from the hotel, if uh, you need to, to or you would like to, uh, to do some shopping. And um, uh, what else, Jan? Yeah, I was just thinking, you may want, you know, as you're thinking about Lit World, I would encourage you to do some reading about Mexico. You know, what an amazing history. Um, Cholula, the city that Jose Carlos mentioned that we're going to visit on our outing, is considered the one of the oldest continuous settlements in the world. Uh, dates back to the seventh century. 
that there have been people living in that spot. Um, just some incredible history there. And um, so I'm, I'm encouraged. I'm, I'm really glad that you'll be able to experience some of Latin America. It's one of my passions. I Prior to, prior to MEI, I was a missionary journalist in, in Latin America. And it's just really neat to see us um, taking Lit World to Latin America, Spanish speaking Latin America. Um, yes. Yeah. So it's, I'm biased, but I think you're going to really love it. Um, some of our lit worlds I would cat categorize as been really fun. I mean, they all have been fun. Um, Philippines stands out. Our Filipino friends, I feel, were, they were really into the spirit of lit world and very hospitable. And um, I think Latin America will be very similar that way. It's going to be very lively, very, uh, you know, I, I would just say, we Christians can have fun too, right? I think uh -huh. yeah, so. I think we're going to have some fun while we're learning a lot. So, um, yeah, just uh, come ready for that to to be received very warmly and with uh, un abrazo from our <laughs> Latin America brothers and sisters. Yes, uh, I would like to to read uh, Marjorie's horror comment, John. She says, okay. "After it will Singapore." 2018, I received the encouragement I needed to organize a writer's workshop in Mexico with some support from MAI. A special plus was that John was able to join us. And yeah, Margie uh, lives in Mexico and I met her in Singapore. And then she uh, hosted a writer's workshop when we uh, met many people from Puebla that are now members of the local host committee. So this is the way God's work through liberal. So uh, the, the, the seeds are planted there and then they start growing and let me tell you how uh, uh, what John shared about feeling uh, part of MAI's uh, family it, it's true uh, since my first uh, uh, live world I've been in, in, uh, connected with people and, and being uh, joyful about their, their uh, achievements in their life their ministries and we've been uh, growing together and it's a great joy to see them uh, again, in another liberal. So, uh, in in my experience, I'm eager to see some of the, uh, the, the family members from MAI and to meet new ones. So, uh, we encourage you to come and see if you're seeing the, you're learning about liberal for the first time. Great. Well, we've uh, we've taken a fast trip to Puebla today. We've looked at kind of an overview of the program and you know, what's going to be happening in Puebla. So I just, add, um, I would encourage you if you have any questions going forward, and I'm, I'm sure some of you will, uh, please reach out at any time to our, to us here at MAI. Um, if we don't have the answers, we'll find somebody who does, but um, be in prayer for us, be in prayer for yourself as you consider whether to come and um, be watching on our website again. We'll you'll see a lot more about the program, about the speakers, the specific topics covered there in the coming weeks. Um, so um, yeah, that's I think that's all we've got today. Uh, I'll just say a farewell, and Jose Carlos, if you have any last words. <clears throat> um, as I mentioned. Uh -huh. Yeah, I just encourage you to consider uh, Lit World, continue to pray about that, and uh, we will look forward to hearing from you and seeing your registrations, too. Yes, uh, uh, please help us praying for all the preparations, and I, I encourage you to, to keep praying, and it would be amazing to see you here, and please feel free to reach uh, to MAI for, for any question that you have. And also, you can find me on social media. And some of us are already friends. But uh, anything we can do to help, and we will be praying for you as well. So thanks a lot. Hasta luego. Nos vemos en México. It's been great having you with us today, and we'll look forward to being in touch.